This is Two Minutes About Time with Luke Allen and Robert E.G. Black, the podcast that takes a look at the film About Time, two minutes at a time. I am Richard Curtis, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't, well, you can just travel back in time two minutes and listen to something else. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Allen. I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Robert E.G. Black. Hello. And with a whole blend of guests from the history of this show, um, I am joined with, in alphabetical order, Helen Austin. Uh, hello. Um, as I said, my name's Helen Austin. Um, I worked with Luke on Unstable. Um, I'm an actress, and I'm happy to be here. Um, Curtis Blaze. Hey, everybody. I'm Curtis Blaze. I... Uh, do a podcast called The What I Wish I Didn't Know Show, and I'm a photographer, and I'm just thrilled to come back to do another episode of this show with you, Luke and Robert. Johan Joseph. Hello, everyone. Uh, I did work on the Independence Day Minute, the Starship Troopers Minute, and I was previously on this podcast with the infamous Oral Sex Minute. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, Brian Lockhart. Hey, how you doing? I'm Brian with the Marine Corps Movie Minute podcast, where we're doing Heartbreak Ridge right now with Clint Eastwood. And uh, just like everybody else, I'm happy to be back. And Brian, we did try to get Graham Curry on for this episode, but he uh-huh. he unfortunately <laughs> says he does quizzes on Wednesdays, but he wished us uh-huh. luck with the show. Had a nice chat with him. None of you will know who Graham Curry is, but you're in for an interesting episode when we get to the one that's dedicated <laughs> to Graham Curry. <laughs> Robert, do we say, or do we just leave it like that? <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Okay, and uh, Resword? Hi, I'm Resword. Welcome to my TED Talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a student filmmaker, media maker. Um, yeah, that's me. And Katie Proctor? Hi, I'm Katie. I'm an actress and also a poet, and like the others, I'm just really happy to be back. <laughs> So, the idea for this episode, however well it will end up working out, I don't know. I'm terrified, to be honest, but this could be fun. I don't think this has been done in Movie by Minute history. Have any of you Movie by Minute people done this before, or is this a fresh idea? (laughs) This one's pretty new for for me. I've been on lots of shows where people didn't know what they were going to talk about beforehand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a thing. (laughs) Um, so I will randomise a number using the just the Google um, number randomizer between 1 and 119. It could be any minute from the film. Some of the guests who've been on may have discussed this minute before. They may not have discussed this minute. Um, and it's just time to find out what it is. Right, so the number for now is number 69. And... I will send minute 69 into the chat and then we will close off this call for uh, probably I'll give two, three minutes and then pop back in to talk about it with no prep whatsoever. Now, here's to hoping that 69 is actually saved on my computer. I just put a link to it in the chat. Ah, that works too. Okay, I've found the page in the script as well. Okay, so I guess the good thing would be to start with Helen because you haven't seen the film yet. So Damn still? it, Luke! <laughs> still. <laughs> Got dropped in that. But I mean if you if you end up joining us for the commentary which will be Friday's episode, but next week we're recording, then you will have seen the film at some point in that way. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so from this, no context whatsoever. I, I feel like you've. I feel like from the minutes we've given you, Helen, you think this this film seems a lot more sex based than it actually is. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering if we were going to end up seeing those puppies or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so what what were your overall thoughts and opinions and brief analysis of this? I thought it looked quite... I thought it made the film look quite funny from that scene. Um, Yeah, you're right. It definitely seems more sexual than, I'm guessing, most of the other minutes. Um, All of the different scenes you've seen me. Your episode involves Tim nearly sleeping with Charlotte, so you're really not getting the best view of this film. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
I think every scene he's been in that I've seen, he's been with a different woman. Um, <laughs> which, I, from what I've heard, is not the the way the no. film goes <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. I thought it seemed quite funny. Um, do we, does he ever pick a best man? I don't know. Um, so, I mean, do Robert, do you think <laughs> do you think we try and go around alphabetically again, or what? what or do we just all talk? What's I don't your think we need to force everyone to talk about everything. No. Um, so, I mean, we we've both talked about this. I remember when it came up. Um, yeah. I can at some point go give it give what it says in the script. I don't know. Should we try that now and then have the conversations from here? Yeah, you look at your yeah. Script. Let's do we'll a talk around you. let's do a thing where we. Um, where we hear a, you know, a summary, and maybe you go through the script, and then we were able to give our thoughts more in depth. Yes, of course. the The listeners don't. I need to sw- edit this around. The listeners don't know what minute sixty nine was. <laughs> we didn't say. <laughs> um, so minute sixty nine. <laughs> no, they have the listeners involved... have to guess. <laughs> <laughs> they they have they have to go back and listen to the episode where we <laughs> discussed minute sixty nine first. Um, so minute 69 involves Mary undressing for Tim uh, to help him make the decision as to who the best man is. Um, so from the original script, Mary says everything. The only thing that you've decided about the wedding is that I'll come down the aisle to the sound of an Italian weirdo singing a song called Il Mondo. Tim says, excellent. To which I've said a definitive no. So here's the deal. I'll take off one item of clothing for every decision you make. This is a one-off offer, strip tease in your own living room by a woman you think, by your own admission, is pretty pretty. Obviously the lines are slightly different in the script, and that's what we'll realise here. Um, and Tim says, okay, you have my full attention, young lady. Mary says, right, good. Where do you think we should get married? Home. I'd hate anywhere else. She takes off her t-shirt and is wearing a bra underneath. Mary says, good. Who should the priest be? Tim says, the local bloke with the yellow teeth and the massive unibrow. She says, okay, that's a lock for Hagrid. And she takes off her baggy sweatpants. She has no socks. She's just standing there in bra and pants. Mary says, ah, right, I should have thought this through first. Tim says, yes. Mary, I should have worn more clothes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So I'd better pick two really important questions. Best man. Tim says, damn, I really wanted to see those breasts, but... (laughs) Best man, now. This is so hard, it's lost, lost. You, you piss off all the ones you don't pick and you end up hating the one you do pick because he makes a bad speech and ruins the day. She says, do you want to see these puppies or not? And actually, in the original script, Tim says, Harry? <laughs> Which is... Uh, <laughs> which is uh, Jay in the original one. And actually, what we... Um, uh, no, never mind. It is... Uh, so I'll, I'll carry on to the end of this page. Mary says, the breasts of the border from which no decision can ever return. Harry, Really? And she reaches on her back for her bra strap. Tim says, no, bad idea. He'll get drunk. Jay, your choice. He's my best friend, but he's a moron. He will F up everything. Yes. Censored it a little bit there. Rory says, oh, sorry, Tim says, Rory, he's boring, but he'll try so hard. Sure? Yes, definitely. Rory. No, Harry. It's Harry. And that is where that ends in the script. Went a little over. What what does everyone think of this, of this minute? And any analysis as to anything really (laughs) analyzing movies one minute at a time uh, has made me pay attention to movies more closely than I ever have in my life (laughs) and I noticed that before she suggested that she was going to take off all of her clothes per or one piece of clothing per answer she was already preparing the room by closing the windows Uh which I thought was a nice touch What, I like that she thought that part through, but not thought it through enough to wear extra <laughs> yeah. clothing, mm. in the, like, like mentioned in the script. Which actually, I understand why they cut some of that dialogue for the actual movie, but that would have been a neat little, yeah, uh, you, you know, like back and forth with them. To, to, it's if possibly they left a it little in. too clunky for the scene, because what we notice, especially doing it minute by minute, is most scenes in about time seem to actually take place over a minute or two. It's, it's perfect for this show, because it's so fast-paced that... Little exchanges like that need to be so significant, and whilst that is significant, I believe from the script, when he goes to the wedding and you've got the one best man, you actually see him go back in time and re-ask oh. Mary, 
each time. So that would have felt that would have felt a bit repetitive. Whereas in the actual film, when he's at the wedding, um, and he changes who the best man is, you just hear the noise of the of the time travel, and bam, it's the next best man. So I think it works. It works really well there. Um, but Wait. yeah, it's. So oh, he goes back in time every time just to see her undress. It's actually not too horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like he just shoots the answers out because he knows he'll get her undressed. <laughs> every time it's faster. Yeah. <laughs> He's like home local bloke. Yeah. <laughs> What's the fourth question? <laughs> Is this the first time that she undresses for him ever? No, that can't be right, right? No, they mm. have sex okay. the... The first night she first, meets him. The first time they meet the third time. Mm. Yeah, yeah okay. the first time they meet the third time. Yeah, it's quite a... Um, or the third time they meet the first time, I guess. Yes, that makes more sense. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering all the more ways we can confuse Helen. It's, it's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it will be really helpful, even if you... I mean, hopefully you'll, you, you you manage to see the film before the commentary, if you are able to join us for the commentary. Um, if not, then the commentary would be a very interesting way to first discover the film. <laughs> yeah. But I feel, I'd feel i feel bad about taking away that first viewing from people, because as you probably all know, it's quite a, 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 quite a film to watch properly. Um, I hope. <laughs> I would be super interested to know what you think is going on here, Helen. I think we have this... Um, the, so, when I first did my episodes, um, I was sat with, with Luke and Robert. Well, I watched them beforehand, and what I thought was happening was not at all what was happening in the film. <laughs> um, it, I could tell that maybe it was time travel, but I, I wasn't... I didn't know it was time travel. I just thought he was like thinking through. He was he was in a theater and it kept going back in time and he kept changing his answers to things. Which works with Robert's theory that maybe there isn't actually any time travel in the film and it's all just a, a story technique to, <laughs> yeah. to help it, him process it, it things. It kind of came across like he was thinking through what he wanted to say and then kept thinking of how the other person would respond and went, no, 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 that's not a good thing to say, and then changed his mind and then changed his mind again. And then you were like, by the way, it's about time travel. I was like, oh, oh okay, I get it now. <laughs> oh. see a whole different different side to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it could have been like the, the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes movies where they would show oh, yeah. it all yeah. play out and then you go back and see what really happened. So. <laughs> Oh, I Although was thinking this... maybe maybe Robert's idea was that this was uh, instead of a time travel movie, it was like next. The oh, who is that? The uh, the film where oh, what's that crazy guy? Nicholas Cage can go forward in time like oh. two minutes to see what happens. Yeah, oh, and then yeah. 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 I forgot because that, that the stuff he does, the power he has in that movie is a lot like what she's describing from the theater scene. Well, I think we just got a fan theory going here where Nick Cage and um, uh, now I'm gonna blow. I'm blanking on names, but basically they're related. <laughs> Nick Cage is like a cousin. <laughs> that would that would really explain the portrait. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a painting which the set decorator has told us isn't Nick Cage. There's a painting that looks an awful lot like Nick Cage in the family home. Uh, for I'm telling you, there you go. We, that's wow. proof right there. <laughs> so Nicholas Cage. Was I need in to the watch Lake this family. movie because I because I did actually have a theory earlier about because um, uh, the episodes that came out today at the time of listening, obviously this was months ago, but the episode that came out today as of recording is the one uh, for the proposal scene, and we talked in that about how Tim had to wait until Mary was awake, and for someone who can flash forwards and backwards in time so often. For him to actually just have to wait because he's in the present wouldn't work. And so I suddenly thought, what if Tim just always lived in yesterday? Like, he always just lived one day behind, so if he needs to go ahead, it's in, it's in, it's in his past still. Could that work? Your wording uh, is so confusing, but I think it's confusing, but I think I know what you mean. <laughs> I, 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 I actually don't oh. think that would be possible because the dad <laughs> wouldn't be able to know when the last day he was going to spend with him would be. Sorry, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't 
can't come on to a show called <laughs> oh, Two man. Minutes About Time and not hear spoilers. That that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, Eddie, who we ha- who we had on, it's it's weird talking about this in past tense when the episodes haven't come out. Eddie, who we had on, only watched the film the day before he went on and listened to all like half of the released episodes of the show first. So he like yeah. knew the content of the film and still yeah, enjoyed it. it. And actually, he's still listening to the show, which is great. Is okay, he's showing me up. Okay. okay. <laughs> we I'm just have to have sure that if... perfect balance of one that's. I'm really not even really sure really... if there. <laughs> I'm not even sure if there were episodes of the show out when we recorded with you, Helen. Like it's. <laughs> I'm not sure. There was like one or two, um, that were out, and I I got like a small glimpse into what was happening. We don't really know what we're doing in the early episode. We don't even know what we're doing now. <laughs> I think we've realised that. No, we got nothing. I remember filming it the first, first episodes. I was, it was it was chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Katie. Katie's been here for the evolution. She was there. Yeah. Right I was in the, the first the, guest. The first yeah, your confidence has like changed massively. Like just the tone of it all. So I, I started listening to it a couple of weeks ago, and from the first episode to like the most recent, Luke, you've. I don't. I don't know how to explain it really. You've just. You've been blossom. able to ex- like, yeah, blossom. I feel like <laughs> Robert you've... already knew what he was doing because you've done this how many times? But too many. You're put underneath Robert's wing. <laughs> His, <laughs> your mentor. Yeah, Ro- 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 Robert guided me through the world of movie by minutes, and now finally I can spread now my wings out. and host my Les Mis podcast. Yes. <laughs> I'm so in for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyone who wants to, we'll book, we'll, 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 we'll book you, you all in for whenever on earth we record that. But that will happen at some point. Also in the lines of Richard Curtis is, um, I'm just plugging my shows now, um, is Love Actually. Over Christmas, we're going to break up Love Actually into the days in December in which it takes place and release an episode on that. Um, but hopefully... I've that seen all fun. of these ones. <laughs> <laughs> So, have we got any other comments? Are we ready to to random? I got. Well, I would kind of Sorry, like I to. Uh, I'd like to know at what other questions. Like, how it t- it would take two more questions to uh, get her all the way uh, no, down. No, just one more. Is that accurate? She doesn't have socks on. Oh, just one more question. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, how insignificant of a decision could he have made and still had that count? <laughs> it doesn't seem yeah, like she had any rules. Yeah, the last question is what flavor cake. <laughs> that's a very important be, decision. I yeah, I was just say that's probably the most important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because um, I, yeah, like, I feel like I feel like the what what congregation cake, remember the cake more than they remember who the best man was. <laughs> yeah, well, because like um, I'm not sure if anybody else has had to plan a wedding, but this third question of who should be the best man, even if there's boobs on the line, is very critical and very hard to think of. And I could totally. Um, understand his point of view where he just gets stumped like <laughs> you you can't just spit out a name and be like yeah that that's a good enough name and it's like no yeah, wait oh uh, if you could spit one out that easily you'd already know because yes. you'd have that friend that's obviously the best man yeah or if you yeah, have you've the power already of time frame that... you just go back yeah. Which, yeah. yeah which i didn't have that power <laughs> but <laughs> hence divorce but <laughs> But Whoa. but he but the thing is though what he said is right that the person I cho- I chose at the time gave a horrible speech. And <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean we, we we see Jay's speech later on and it is a horrible speech. Yes, but I mean have we got any other comments before we randomize to our next minute? And if it ends up being the sex scene, then Helen's a bad luck charm. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> Well, I got. Oh. I was gonna say the fact that there was a strip tease on minute sixty nine. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, relatively. Oh, someone had to say it. Yeah, yeah, it made. Then, uh, yeah, what yeah. if they were cutting but, down words in the uh, the script just to get this to happen? Like, <laughs> that, that's why they cut it. I out. feel like the to keep, like, to keep I this. Put that in this minute. <laughs> Yeah, to, to keep this on, keep this on the family-friendly tone. We won't in- explain why that's funny. They either know they, or they, they don't. Well, you know, they knew somebody was going to break it down minute by minute, so they they did it for that. Purposes. So, kids listening, <laughs> here's what this means. Um, <laughs> there was a minute-long conversation of how they explain like, everything, everything that would have like help, and they're like, "No, we gotta get rid of that." This this part got yeah. line at sixty nine. <laughs> well, I was I was going to make one comment about the whole striptease time travel thing. Uh, you know, so 
this this scene reminds me of Billy Madison when his girlfriend was teaching Ed, uh, was trying to teach Adam <laughs> no, Sandler, yeah. and for every question he got right, she would remove a bit of clothing. Mm-hmm. The gag in that is they cut back later when he's really acing it, and it's Chris Farley, and he's like, "That is correct," and he starts yeah. taking his shirt off. <laughs> I would have liked to see Tim. Go back like we suggested over and over again to keep seeing this with the better answers, but but he screwed something up and there's Chris Farley instead of his <laughs> wife. <laughs> or it's his uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right. oh. Oh. Uncle Desmond taking off his suit. <laughs> go back, go back, go back. I feel like if Uncle Desmond took off his tie, it would feel too uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the layers like for this him. kind of thing. Yeah. I like Uncle Pete. He's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so we'll randomly select the next minute. Robert, I was thinking since we sometimes have a bonus minute, we could probably do three of these, right? Sure. <laughs> or however long, yeah. if it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> we, we can keep going forever. We'll see. We don't want too okay. long an episode. Yeah. 36. I'm now scared because that could be the sex scene. <laughs> 36. <laughs> no, Robert. 36 is the, uh, is the museum. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, so just the topless picture of Kate Moss instead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're not you're not making your case quite very an well. Image yeah. <laughs> Weirdly, I was um, oh. I was reading on uh, the website Common Sense Media the, the, which is like age ratings for kids or whatever. That you, they, they they recommended that you're 16 before you watch this film. That's just no, like it's not that bad. It really isn't. I mean, I think I probably watched it when I was about. Well, I watched it when I would have been fourteen. I showed it to my sister when she was like eleven. It's fine. Anyway, we'll drop out and watch this minute and come back in shortly. <laughs> I'm just um, getting the page in the script now, now. Now we know when we're working the script, we know that this minute was deliberately put in front of the topless photo because the the set. Uh, Steve told us that. Yes, because right? we or, asked. What's his name? Steve's the other guy. Yeah. No, yeah, Steve's location. That. JP. Uh, I'm wondering JP if in the script it specifies where they are. So. I mean, at first, we'll explain. I think we said what it was, but just in case we didn't. This minute 36, once again, one that you guys haven't been on for. This was Alex who was on this week. Um, And it involves Tim meeting Mary for the second time, yet Mary meeting Tim for the first time. Um, So Tim said, sorry, Mary says, it is Tim who opens, right? I'm on the wrong page. Um, Hi, Mary says, hello. Tim's, how are you? I'm fine. Great. It says pregnant pause. Um, We never met before, says Mary. He says, oh no, then a word we don't repeat on this show, followed by, of course we haven't. She says, you must have mistaken me for someone else. He says, yes. No, no, your name's Mary. She says, that's distinctly weird. How do you know? He said, you look like a Mary. Kit Kat observing this sceptically. Mary says, in what way? Tim, well, my mum's called Mary. He isn't doing well and knows it. And I look like your mother. Uh, How how far do we go? You can tell me when we stop because I don't actually remember. It's a total stranger. Okay, not at all. Much prettier. Nice fringe, by the way. She says, right, it's new. Well, great meeting you. Sorry, I've got to go. My friend's waiting for me and you're a total stranger. And Tim says, yes, absolutely crazy stuff. So she doesn't actually repeat Total Stranger in the script. But other than that, I think it's pretty much the, the same wording. Um, so once again, Helen, I'll pop to you as the, as the person who hasn't seen this before. Well, you know, one minute she's getting her puppies out for him and then the next minute she's she's not even met him, so... <laughs> That's an interesting view to have of the film before seeing it. Yeah. Um, I think if I hadn't known it was about time travel, I would in this scene. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you do almost feel sorry for him. Like, oh, you've messed up. Are you going to be able to fix this? Because, you know, you've already, you've already rewritten history, I guess. 
um, you've already rewritten it so that you haven't met yet, um, are you going to be able to fix this? Which I'm sure you all know he does, I guess. Yeah, the rest of the film isn't just him, like, crying in a dark room. mistakes. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a good minute, as we discussed quite in detail on the show, as to why on earth they decided to do it in front. Which, it, I mean, you didn't see the end of the other minute, but this is the only moment of nudity in the film, is the mm-hmm. picture of Kate Moss in the background. And it's like, why? Because that's one of the main reasons it's an R in the States. It's a 12A here, and it got an R in the States for language and nudity. So that's just strange, and JP told us that that was deliberate. <laughs> but I can't remember why. <laughs> it just seemed... Well, probably... Uh, I'm not saying probably. Maybe it was like Super 8 and it was just some production value that they could add. This thing happened to be showing at the museum. Well, they, if this they wouldn't created ha- this exhibit so they have all the... They have a bunch of Kate Moss photos on the walls. So there is that. Oh, it was... A, this was a recreation. Yeah. Yeah. The real exhibit I did not closed. know that. And so okay. they borrowed this stuff. But a lot yeah, of yeah, I guess okay. Even that photo of her, that is kind of a famous one of her. Yeah. So it, I mean, I mean, it makes sense that it would be there. It's just very strange that here. Here's the weird thing about it is because that photo would be considered art in such a way because of the way yeah. because of yes. its its iconicness. But you can put this this scene on YouTube because it's considered art and it becomes uncensored. That's why it makes it weird that the R rating comes in for nudity. Yeah. I mean, yeah, considering yeah. back in the 80s you would get, uh, what was Clash of the Titans? Yeah. They had a lot of nudity in it, mm-hmm. and that was a PG oh, there movie. Was, there was boobs all over G movies back in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we've discussed previously uh, on our show, that like Smokey and the Bandit 3 had a lot of nudity, and it was a PG movie, and we're like, why? It's it's Smokey and the Bandit. It doesn't need it. And weirdly, that was released as an 18 in the UK, which I, I, mean, I haven't seen anything Smoking the Bandits, but I haven't researched that. That was an 18 when it was a PG. Yeah, so at least it's a, it's a role reversal here. I mean, we've obsessed. I think all of you have been on episodes where I've obsessed about age ratings. So you know my, my fascination about the, the age rating system. But I mean, the whole exchange we get here is brilliant and one of the most iconic moments in the film, I think. Um. So, yeah, I mean, what what have any of the rest of you got to say about, about the dialogue? His realization when he, re- when he realized that he messed up and that they haven't met and that little F-bomb he drops, even though it's, you know, that's one of the things that got it an R, it was so perfectly timed in the way he delivered it. Just like, oh, man, I really messed up. And it's, yeah. to me, it's also funny. The way- yeah, all, all, all oh, the yeah. uses of bad language in the film are really good <laughs> like i'm not i'm not yeah. an advocate for filling <laughs> films with bad language i mean i know we had a, a little bit in unstable and stuff but like it's yeah like i i didn't watch it and think oh it's full with swears or whatever i, I watched it and thought every single one of them was either funny or emotional most mm-hmm. of the time funny there is one moment which those of you who've seen it and remember Lindsay duncan mm. as the mother delivers it yes. and it almost brings me to tears when she says it so it's Every use of bad language in this film is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because it's well placed instead of everywhere. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, not... it's a lot more frequent in the script. Yeah, and and in this minute in particular, that is very realistic. As how somebody when they dawns on them just how bad they messed up, how they might just say that to themselves the way Tim does, and it it's it, it works. Yeah, because if you're meeting somebody new, you're not dropping a bunch of f bombs. But then when you realize <laughs> you you screwed up like he did, you're gonna drop it because yeah. you really messed up. So. Oh, and that's something I was gonna say too. As you know, we know that he's saying it because he messed up, but to her, it doesn't come off as uh, vulgar because no, I feel probably this. the Sarens, the character can also sense that there's something more going on with him, mm-hmm. and maybe yeah. even that use kind of kept her curious enough to stay in the conversation for longer. Yeah, yeah, that that actually makes me wonder. Like, does she have some sort of feeling because this has happened before? Like, like you know, like mm-hmm. it's it's almost like it's fate, but it's yeah. just happening differently now. So 
Yeah, because, I mean, if this was just me walking up to random cute girl <laughs> and I acted like this, man, cops are getting called, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, he's, he's kind of a creep. It, it, when she says total stranger, it, it's funny she doesn't say total creep. Uh, yeah. But it, it is almost like, well, he's, he can, he's, not, he's not aggressive. He's not, he's just, you can tell almost he's shy. And, he, and again, he's, he's awkward. He's like that cute awkward, I guess, maybe is what. But also, that's where I was wondering, like, because they've already met, because they've already had a connection, is there still a connection there, even though he messed up mm. his history? Is there still something in the universe that's kind of faded them to... Yeah, he's still got to put the effort in, and he's still got to make it work, and he can ruin it. But is is that what kept her there? Yeah, as somebody stated. According to that minute that was that we discussed, I think off the air that was not that did not make it into the movie. What are the rules for time travel? Um, Does it pertain to what he just said? Yeah, I I I don't think it would be impossible that. She could sense something. There's nothing. Uh, yeah, I think that's more of an extra thing. Yeah, I mean, Robert, how far into Tim finding out that he can time travel is this moment? Where does it stand in the timeline? This is 2007. This is June. And the movie starts uh, New Year's of 2004 to 2005. So, a couple of years. So, it's weird that it's taken this long for Tim to talk to someone who he hasn't met yet? Yeah, it's this long before he screws something up. <laughs> Through time travel, because you'd feel like he would have figured out how it all works by now, or he'd or he'd realize this possibility while sitting in the museum for four days, or could but he have possibly? The... Could he have possibly been using his time travel to, I don't know, like fix his homework that he didn't realize, like a real life well, implication yeah. of working with exams. someone? Yeah, like he's it actually doesn't... talking to someone about this. It makes it different. He doesn't really find out how the time travel. Like learn how to use time travel properly, really, until uh, his dad dies. Really, yeah, much later. Yeah. because yeah. that's when he finds. Yeah, spoilers, out, Helen. Uh, yeah. I thought, <laughs> thought that had already been brought up. Sorry, you know, I think, I think I think it had slightly. It's in the like, trailer. In all fairness, when, <laughs> so that's when he really like learns how to use the time travel, and that isn't it? Cause, yeah, because he, he and he doesn't know how uh, bad it can be until boy Posey shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think uh, <laughs> near the end, he's actually time traveling to pinpoint moments versus this one. He just tried to go to a spot without having to overwrite one uh, a certain day. Like, like there's more of a buffer between something he did versus this day than near the end of the movie. Well, that brings up something we never I don't think we ever talked about in the show, because the first time he time travels, he time travels in the cupboard mm -hmm. to being in the cupboard. When yes. in the past he shouldn't have been in the cupboard. I think we we touched so on this. Somehow slightly. his past self has to yeah. like have a weird random urge to get inside a cupboard, so that he can replace him. Yeah, I, I, I think I only just edited an episode where you mentioned that first. Yeah, and that was like the penultimate episode or something. So it was. <laughs> it's something I've I I have wondered. Like, does Tim just vanish, or does he actually just go? I'm just going to go upstairs and walk into a cupboard. Yeah, at a certain because... point, does he just make sure he's in the dark at least like every hour on the hour, just in case for later? Well, because that also went... means that he'll know that he's got to go back in time and fix something. Well, if, like Brian was saying, if she has some connection beyond the flow of time to him, and that's why she stands here long enough, rather than being creeped out, maybe his past self knows something's about to happen, and suddenly he wants to be in the dark. Well, he know. obviously went and hid in the cupboard after he didn't kiss that girl. Yeah. Like, you know, he was actually... <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. He went, he went for a good cry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, that explains it. Just just after he makes embarrassing yeah. mistakes, he's just like, ah. Yeah. That, that's how awkward he is, is every time he's embarrassed, he hides in a cupboard. But mind you, he'd have, to, <laughs> he'd have to have hidden in the cupboard before, wouldn't he? Rather yeah. After. Yeah, because he kiss, kisses her at midnight. But... Okay, well, that could be something uh, Dad could be teaching him as a child to, so that it would just come naturally to him <laughs> without explaining the rest to him. Like, every That's time you do something him, embarrassing, I want you to go cupboard. to a cupboard. <laughs> right? I'll, tell you when you're, I'll tell you when you're 18. <laughs> it, was, it was trying to find Narnia in there, and it just didn't work out. Yeah. Weirdly, Narnia is what my family are watching downstairs right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Same universe. <laughs> 
Well, I've traveled back in time, so I already knew that. That's why I had that reference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, here's the weird, the question that I have because when he the New Year's party, he cannot time travel, but right. he doesn't get it till later on. So he actually time he gets travels, it the next morning. Yeah, so he actually time travels to a point where he actually doesn't have that ability. Which yeah, also back. happens at the end. No spoilers. Yes, well, we don't but know he's holding his... hands with his <laughs> yeah. father. Yeah. yeah. No, he's not. <clears throat> actually. Oh. I just watched the movie again last week, and they well, are not holding hands, which I was going to talk about when we did the commentary. Oh. But yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Like so my guess is that he's always had the ability, but his dad chose not to tell him until he was at an age where he was responsible to use it. I feel it. like he'd accidentally do it sometime then. Yeah, I'd like what, to see you sort just, of a, yeah, he's hiding in a cupboard yeah. out of embarrassment. He's like, "Oh, I should have yeah. done that differently," and he just randomly goes. And he that. wishes he were he wishes he were back in time to uh-huh. do it all over again. And boom. Well, may, may, I mean, it, it, it could be like I mean, I'm just currently for, as part of uh, my pre-enrollment college stuff, reading the book of Time Traveler's Wife. Mm. Like when. Um, oh, I can't believe I've forgotten the main character's name. I shouldn't have done that. When the guy from Time Traveler's Wife yeah, first finds out traveler. that he can time travel, when the time traveler first finds out he can time travel, it's when he's a kid and his parents, like, they don't know at that point. Their parents just say, oh, it must have just been a dream you had. Like, that that could be how it was for Tim. That it's just for ages. It's just that. It was just a weird Well, yeah, and what had, happens to past Tim when he gets replaced? Is he... In the back of his head, watching everything that happens, being confused. Just some serious deja vu. Yeah. He's just yeah. out. He's out on the beach having fun with Boy Posey. Because we know they eventually <laughs> remember stuff. Because Kit Kat remembers stuff immediately. Yeah, she remembers right. both. Which then Boy Posey is a whole tragedy because he's got a year of a kid he remembers <laughs> and it never happened. Yeah, it's just. I, I'm, I'm just going to be more and more intrigued as to when Helen first watches this film with just these, these <laughs> odd phrases like boy posy. <laughs> I, I mean, the more we talk about it, the more the time, you know, time stream continuum is just completely collapsing on itself and uh, my head is going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, weirdly, and it's something I've said a few times on this show, which is very odd considering the format of the show and how it works is that it's not a time travel film when you're supposed to think about it. Like, it's just yeah. supposed to be, yeah, this is how the rules of time travel work. Yeah. Just as when Richard Curtis did the film yesterday, last year. Um, the film's called Yesterday, and it came out last year. It's not called <laughs> Yesterday, last year. Yeah. Which, <laughs> <laughs> but when, oh, when that's he, a good when, title. <laughs> yeah, I might write that one down. Um, when, when, he, when last year he made the film Yesterday, it was the same idea. It was, here's a universe where the Beatles don't exist, but one guy knows it. We don't ask why, we just tell a story with it. Yeah. And I think so many films can get stuck in the logistics, whereas this just goes, just go with it, and it works. It's the yeah. Austin Powers explanation. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Just have fun. Try not to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if we're if we're trying to think of all the times that he would, in the past, have to go in cupboard so he can be replaced by his future self, third person, it makes him look like a guy with some really weird social anxiety issues. We've yes. well, we we <laughs> talked with. I can't remember who's, who the guest was, and I think I bleeped the entire thing about what his family might think takes place. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Rob, I can't, can you remember who, what guest it was? No. But um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's one of those those strange things. And I mean, if if we do start thinking about the rules of time travel the emotional end scene falls to pieces in your hands. Uh, but, I mean, have we got any other comments about the scene that we've hardly talked about? Because that's how this show works. <laughs> I, wonder, no. I wonder how many times it's, like, messed up with the timelines. So, like, mm. um, when talking to Mary, you know how, like, he thought it, he had said, like, hi, as if they'd met before. I wonder if he get, gets mixed up as if, as in, like, if my brain's not working. Like I, they're talking to I their think at kids this point not like, many but later there could be indication that he's done things yeah, do more times I mean? than we've seen or like yeah. um, I mean like when he's talking to his kids about how him and Mary met and he's like oh yeah we met at like a oh, dark yeah. restaurant or yeah something. I really wanted this think I really wanted something like this yeah and she's like sorry what <laughs> that, that, that's what the movie <laughs> is Is he's telling the story and he's like yeah your, your mother and I we met at this restaurant like, she said you met at a museum does she ever find she out she said you met at a party no, she doesn't ever spoilers. find out. Does she never find well, out? No, it's not really a massive he... spoiler. No, she, she doesn't find she out. She doesn't find out. Well, 
And he's giving us guys a bad name because it sounds like we don't remember, and we're just he's just making up when they first met. But uh-huh. actually, he's correct. <laughs> One of his kids like that's not what I heard. Like, yeah. Oh shoot. Oh. Um, but yeah, so let's 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 randomly generate another minute. I think I might ju- we might just go on until as much until everyone needs to leave because this is just fun. Um, four. I think we might be safe from from anything inappropriate. Uh, on, on number on number four. Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Give us time. We can f- think of something. Yeah. Once again, none of you guests were on for this. This was me and Robert on our own for number the minute four. It's like this this Google generator knows. <laughs> uh, first podcast always earlier episodes are on your own. Yeah, yeah it's you always don't, safe. You don't, yeah, you don't want any guests in on like horrible minutes. <laughs> I think I think what we ended up doing is I think we literally recorded them like three days in a row. So me and Robert yeah. recorded the first three episodes. Then the next day we had Katie on. Then the next yeah. day we had Alice on. So we didn't have much time to figure out the show before we had Katie on. So it worked. <laughs> we managed. I, well, I listened back to one of the first episodes the other day because weirdly one of my pre-enrollment tasks for college is to... Um, is to describe in detail and analyze the opening two minutes of a film. <laughs> <laughs> like, boy, do I got a project for you. <laughs> I was really annoyed that it had Just to. Just two? I know. Well, it, was like, it was like the first two or three minutes, they said. And I was like, I was really annoyed that it couldn't be as audio like i had to write it because i thought could i just not send them the first episode of the podcast to just be like ah, i got the whole film for you if you want like could i point something out yeah and you're probably yeah. gonna bite my head off for this right but in some previous episodes i think even in the first one that i did we mentioned how everything tim does is selfless and it's for someone else but yeah. really there's only two times in the film where he uses the time travel to help someone else, or or in a selfless way. Well, it's, there's always oh, some selfishness because he yeah. has to have a reason to do it. So, but most of it is also involving other people because he helps Kit Kat, he helps Harry. You could make an argument that he's helping Mary since they got along the first time and seemed to like each other. It's like the, the only two ways that I was thinking of though was <laughs> when he goes back to help with the play. Yeah, Harry. Yes. Erasing like the number from his phone, and when he, okay, another spoiler, Helen. Do you want to cover your ears or? La 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 la. Well, cover, the the ears. cover the headphones. Cover the headphones. And when he decides to let his dad go and have the other yeah. child, so I guess it's like not time traveling, which is the yeah. selfless bit. Do you know what I mean? I think they're the only two parts where it's not for himself but even with Whereas, harry's play he could have undone that to go back and make sure he met mary yeah that's but right instead he goes like, and he goes and meets mary this way in a weirder way yeah <laughs> in a more, yeah that's what i'm saying like that's one of the selfless times he uses it i think i don't know I'm i think all the other think. times it's in some way well the first few times him. are definitely selfish you, know, you know he goes back to kiss polly he goes back to not spill the suntan lotion. Yeah. <laughs> he goes back to ask out try and Charlotte. Get he goes back to try to hook up earlier with Charlotte. Yeah. But then all that goes badly. And so I think the way he's narrating it is he doesn't really use it for stuff like that anymore. We don't see a lot of it. Mm. Clearly he does because he cheats on his exams. We can assume. <laughs> That's in the script. Yeah. We can only assume it. But he definitely cheats on his court cases. <laughs> But you, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Like I say in in the script, it is confirmed that Tim, um, and I'm pretty sure it was filmed because I think there's someone who's credited on the IMDb as as being uh, an exam student. That ah. Tim goes back in time and like in his in his exam for law school goes back in time to his room and reads the textbook first, <laughs> and then. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he does he does cheat his exams, but yeah, I mean, I think it's important that. Uh, that basically what happens there is what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh yeah, that his dad. His dad is the big selfless one with it all, really. Because once again, spoilers, but still, I think you'll still enjoy the film either way. 
uh, Helen, whether you know this <laughs> or not. But his dad says that he decided to um, give up work at um, 50 or whatever to to spend more, to play more table tennis with his son. Now, the dad has all the time in the world to do what he wants. He did it to make sure that everyone else has more time with him. And so I think the dad is definitely mm. like the main person who uses his time travel well does do they know when each other have used like gone back we don't think do you know so I mean? but no, there's Tim, a couple moments where the, yeah. it looks like the dad figures it when he spills the suntan lotion and runs inside the dad smiles yeah yeah <laughs> right, when yeah. he takes kit kat back to the new year's <laughs> party the dad definitely knows because he hears the mention of cupboard yeah but i think when, when tim is really good at something his dad just knows how many times have you done this, Sam? <laughs> like it's a, uh, but yeah, I mean, but even there, you, you you question it because there's one scene in the wedding where the dad goes back in time to, yeah. to um to change his wedding speech, but if it's Tim who's telling us the story, Tim doesn't know that. Well, hmm. except what the dad thinks he didn't say is that he loved him, which he says. He says there's only three men I ever loved, so he he does kind of, maybe he goes back. He tells him he goes back in time, but he's already done it. So yeah, that's that's like, how the I the version did, did we he, see is the yeah. Creature. That's how I yeah. took. Oh it yeah, too. He, do, yeah. He, doesn't, he, he doesn't say yeah. The three men I ever loved was before he goes back in time, wasn't it? I forgot yeah. that. I always thought that was in the second wedding speech. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, shall we shall we go and take a look at minute four? Yeah, second twenty three. You can see the point where Jay pulls him out of a cl- cupboard because he's in there awkwardly, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's the it's the New Year's party the first time round. So in the script, a New Year's party. Um, yeah, I'll just read the whole thing because I'm not. It's it, it's rough because we don't have any dialogue as to what point this minute starts. So, New Year's party. Good songs from 2005 play. An awkward mixture of young people, old people, and children. Tim walks from the stairs into the old people's room. Then and then into the dancing room. I mean, it's yeah, good that we actually, were, this actually discussed here, with. Robert, because we we were confused as to where the old people were, because <laughs> we thought there were too many young people. I don't think we see many old people in the earlier minute, do we? There's um, an old dude right next to uh, Kit Kat and Jim. Um, then into the dancing room. Uh, there's one man dancing with peculiar, unwarranted confidence. It's Tim's friend Jay. Tim smiles, hopefully at a pretty girl. She ignores him in favour of a handsomer guy. He ends up dancing with a slightly strange girl, Polly. She, yeah. in contrast, gives him a very welcoming smile. Kit Kat passes him. She says, I've just spotted the handsomest boy in the world. Bad news for you, you're down to number two. <laughs> we glimpse the boy. He is indeed <laughs> handsome and dangerous. An hour later, Kit Kat and the handsome boy, Jimmy, getting very close, his hand playing with the bottom of her skirt, cut on just before midnight. Tim is trying to get through the night, avoiding drunk people. Jay nudges a table and wine bottles and glasses all spill at once. Everyone makes little mistakes, Jay says. Suddenly, it's midnight. A big countdown to the big moment. Tim finds himself near the now rather drunk Polly. She moves towards him, leaning in for a New Year's kiss. He panics. Doesn't know what to do. Finally, on the dot of midnight, he just takes her hand and shakes it firmly. (laughs) Happy New Year! (gasps) Sorry. And I'll just check that there's nothing (laughs) else of note. There's a little bit at the end. Okay. They look around. Everyone else is kissing. Kit Kat is now kissing the handsomest, coolest, nastiest looking boy at the party. Two 14-year-olds grabbing the moment. As Tim holds Polly's hand, we see a tear appear in the corner of... A tear, sorry. Let's start again. As Tim holds Polly's hand, we see a tear appearing in the corner of her eye. For her, it's a profoundly sad moment. No one loves her. She walks away. Tim is mortified, shakes his head. Bad start to the year. Kit Kat passes him. Very poor behaviour. Very poor. And then, interior Tim's bedroom morning. A wide window overlooks the lawn and the sea. And that is our minute. And actually, reading it out, Richard Curtis's like writing, just in the in the notes, in the, in, in the descriptions, I really like... <laughs> Wait, so I got a question real quick. Kit Kat's supposed to be 14 years old? No, no. No, I think that was a That diff- was a reference to other kids. Oh, know. okay. I was but it, 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 no it, was, it was odd that they were, <laughs> that they were the only other people right. that were mentioned at that point. It is yeah. strange. 
Yeah, she's I'm downing I'm all that if... hard liquor at 14. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, no way. <laughs> the girls on the couch when uh, Jay spills stuff are pretty young. So they could mm. be. Fair enough. I really like uh, what you said, Robert, and I mean... in the original episode. Mm. About, you know, what, what's the guy's name that Kit Kat's Jimmy. with? Jimmy. 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 That Jimmy was holding the drink yep. and giving it yeah he's to pouring her. alcohol and then later her. on yeah. and then later on he's the reason for her alcohol problems the, yeah. al- for the alcohol problem problems and i really i really like that yeah and, and it cuts from it him was... pouring drink into her mouth to them with like their hands twisted around each other drinking together and that's yeah that's the, how the relationship's going to be yeah, I, I, I heard it and I was like, okay, I'll write that down. I'll steal that. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah, script but... is just so tight. Everything is everything is uh, telegraphed beforehand like this. Yeah. Well, we had a thing we kept Every finding out. This is movie that just people, reveals more. People didn't remember this movie after seeing it once and then they'd like it more the second time. I think it's because of stuff like that. Like, you don't know who Jimmy is, you don't know he matters until later. You don't, we haven't seen, we've barely seen the dad at this point, but he's dancing in the scene, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's 20, it, it's 26 senses mm. <laughs> as you watch this the second time. Yeah, because I think one of the things that makes him important is um, that the person who wrote the screenplay, because he definitely had the vision towards the end, is he also, because that wasn't in the script, that they were feeding right. each other the drinks or that he started it. it, it mm. He added it in later on. So I think that is a good touch with the fact that the person who had control of how the characters were going to be developed in this world also had part in the origin. Because yeah. sometimes you get that disconnect between writer and director and certain cases like that. And this one, that little <laughs> touch that does mean something, that one is something that you get when... Uh, you have a good combo of writer director, but fortunately, it's both the same person. Yeah, it's definitely fortunate that that Richard is able to do that. And this was his last film directing, um, and he decided, like on the on the set, that or at some point during production, that this was going to be his last film. Incidentally, he said it was sort of linked to the theme of the film, the idea that he wants to spend more time appreciating the moment, appreciating time with his family, which makes sense. Um, but it is interesting that this is the film he decided to to leave on because although Richard Curtis's directing in this is incredible, you say Richard Curtis, people don't think director, right. people think writer because that's that's what he's known for. A Richard Curtis movie could be directed by anyone and it's still a Richard Curtis movie. I don't know because like every director has their like yeah. separate thing, you know. I mean, it yeah, means something, it but, but a good screenwriter has yeah. their things as well that get past the director. Yeah, so you can still tell. Yeah. So unless I missed it before I pop back on the call, Helen, we didn't ask you this time about this being your first impression of this minute. What did you get? Um, I think I can't remember exactly what wording you said was in the script, but the very first line was something like, um, "Good music starts playing." Now I was watching this minute just <laughs> dancing along All right, the whole I time, two singing. I noticed on the. I didn't notice until this time round that there were people in the party who were singing along. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, you're here on the local. He like dancing. Yeah, around I and... thought about that. I was like, oh, I'm definitely on audio yeah. now. <laughs> you got a little so, surprise, Luke. I, I I actually have a question for oh. Helen about this. Uh, so okay. we went from sixty nine to thirty six <laughs> to four. What do you think about seeing how awkward Tim is and his growth through the movie? Because you've kind of seen it from when he's with a woman to trying to hit it off with Mary and the way he dances with Polly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think at this rate, I'm basically yeah. watching the film in reverse. I might as well just start with the last minute and work my way backwards. About time, um, memento edition. <laughs> <gasps> I, I think you've yeah, just given Robert so... the idea for his next Movies by Minute project. I want to do memento <laughs> that way. He is so <laughs> awkward. Um... That scene, I, I was cringing when I watched that bit where, where he doesn't kiss her and the music changes. That's such a good moment for the music to change. Because he still had time when he realised. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Like He shook her hand and said sorry. 
everyone was still kissing, he could have a hundred percent got away with that. But yeah. he could have said yeah. sorry and then kissed her. Yeah. 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 The, well, the sorry is what what sells his how awkward and pathetic uh-huh. he is in that moment. Yeah, because yeah, he realizes it's like, it. So, yeah, <laughs> he just can't help it. Okay, so in in the in the script, um, once again, Helen, this isn't what the rest of the film is like. In the script, <laughs> he goes back in time and kisses her as we see in the film. Right. We then cut ahead to him waking up in the morning. And Polly comes out of the bathroom. He's just slept with Polly, but then he realizes it was her first time and undoes it because he doesn't think he should have been her first time. No, Ooh, not that no. guy. No, yeah, that's yeah. not good. That <laughs> yeah. I, I can see why that was cut. That just would not have worked as like Tim's first time travel, and for him to have mm. screwed up that much. You could make no, a movie it's... about that though. It'd be a horrible, toxic masculinity kind of movie, but you could do it. Just goes around yeah. sleeping yeah. with people and then erasing well, it. <laughs> the, yeah, and then the there's re- also if he does that, it's kind of like he's making decisions on behalf of other people. Yes, that they were comfortable yes. with in the first place. It's not like they they weren't prepared for something. They made a decision, yeah. and then he's decided to rewrite that. Bit different. So, but the thing is that that I want to the 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 reason why I was wondering about that question is because his level of awkwardness it seems to be the same. But he's just more yeah. confident in his awkwardness because he knows he can fix it. Yeah. Versus the beginning of yeah, this. Yeah, he's week. never had to fix his awkwardness. Yeah. Yes, have so you, um, here. Have you ever sat with someone um, or, or seen, a, seen a film like this, for example, and you thought, oh, you know, if I, maybe there'd be a chance that with certain people this person wouldn't be quite as awkward or, oh, they're both pair of, it takes two people to make this situation awkward. All it take is for one person to start talking for the other person let me, to, to know. Let me answer awkward. that real quick. Not for Let him. me answer that real quick. Yes, I have a mirror. So I <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't, you know, with him, it, it feels like no matter who is there, no matter what they're doing, he will still make it awkward. There yes. is no fixing that. Did anyone else feel personally attacked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I probably never, relate never to Tim the problem. most. Yeah. <laughs> no, these are things I say to myself every night. You could have fixed this. You could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fall asleep to my misery. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I say, well, these, these, these are all sort of, yeah, like all, all of the things that Tim redoes are the sort of things you think about in the shower the next day. It's just yes. like you're, you're sat there thinking, ah, oh, if only I'd said that, if only I'd done this. If, mm-hmm. Yeah, so... When I, you're I in do, an argument, I and do, then later on you're yeah. like, ah, oh, I should have said that. I do love the fact that Tim is still awkward, like, through most of the film, that he he doesn't use that ability and then be like, ah, well, now, <laughs> now I'm invincible. It's yeah. like... Which is, think, it's just because he things. just is awkward and there's no way around it. Mm-hmm. He he can't think of a way yeah. out of it well, to go back in time and, and undo it. Because his father's that, awkward and so is Posey. Yeah. yeah, when they remove yeah. the yeah. whole scene where he tries to sleep with Polly, I think it becomes important because it makes it seem like he becomes too cocky and confident. Right. It, well, yeah, it if we find out that Tim does that Tim can sleep with people, technically it, it's dangerous grounds because it would be that Tim could it sleep is. with someone and that person would not know that he'd slept with her. If we if we knew from Tim's first time travel thing that he can go about and do these things and remove these things and all of that stuff then A, all of his little decisions little errors would seem of so little consequence. We have, B, if he erased we it, just though. wouldn't like him. I, yeah, I, I it like turns him into version. a predator like uh, what, um, what it turns the movie him into, Limitless. Yeah. Goes back it, it's more it's like, like, hey, tonight was awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's more like he would be a paladin well, from the movie Jesus. Jumper. Yeah. He'd be one of the people with the superpowers, but it'd be, it'd be from the bad guy's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So instead, he well, all he, he does is kiss Polly, and Polly's happy. Yeah. That's all we yeah, need. That, <laughs> I like yeah. the innocence of it all. I think yeah. it's brilliant right. that that it, she. I mean, we we discussed on the show that it seemed like she didn't want any more from Tim. That like, Tim in that moment basically made her yeah, year. Yeah, someone to kiss at <laughs> And that was it. Like I, th- I, you know, we think that maybe Polly, he, Tim knew that Polly had had a crush on him for a while, and that just through kissing her, he would have just fulfilled her, you know, childhood dreams. That it would have been, yeah, it could have been quite. And I, I do like the fact that it's so quite sweet and innocent. I think reading the original intention in the script 
almost ruined that a tiny bit for me. <laughs> yeah. It was just like... Ooh. No, that was a good cut. That was a good cut. Yeah. Yeah. I think what makes this uh, look... Like, what makes Polly kind of adorable in this thing is... The way she dances, she <laughs> seems just as awkward yes. oh, as yeah. him. Yeah. But yeah. what makes her different in this is... Um, it seems like she's been dreaming about getting that New Year's Eve kiss. And this is probably the closest she's been. And she just confidently awkward yep. about the whole mm. evening confidently. yeah she dances that, him into a corner yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and she <laughs> when she throws the dress over her, her face for some reason <laughs> it's it's adorably awkward yep but she's no better than him in such a way ju- other than the the time travel it's just she's really happy at this point and i think that's what crushes her is when she thinks like oh it's finally gonna happen like it's just this moment she can talk about that it happened, but he crushes her. Mm. I should just say briefly to our audio listeners, just in case this, I didn't say it explicitly. The reason they're not hearing Katie now is that she dropped out of a call. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe it'd just be a, a slight brief thing, but if she's not had any comment for this minute, then it's probably important to say that she didn't just like say horrible stuff. She was that horribly offended out. by this. <laughs> 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 it was like when we cl- when, um, I just edited the episode where we claimed that we had Ben Folds on but had to cut the episode because he sw- swore like a sailor yep. like it was a- <laughs> <laughs> which I think now means is- that if we <laughs> manage to get Ben Folds on he has to swear like a sailor yes <laughs> so that you can believe it or you just bleep whatever he says so it sounds like we just swears. we just yeah. yeah we just get audio clips from Ben Fold's interviews uh-huh. <laughs> just yeah. just release a bonus episode <laughs> and then bleep those <laughs> have we got any other things to say because I think we probably could do one or two more of these random minute things I was only going to do a couple but this is fun yeah. if any, unless anyone needs to go just real quick does Jimmy remind everybody anybody of Cillian Murphy if I said it right yes yes yeah, I, I, I mean I yeah, Killian. Yeah, yeah. I always mess. I it know up, the name. I, <laughs> I don't know the name. Just I'll briefly, be the, uh, I, I, I'll be the listener that doesn't know what that is. What What is that? Killian Murphy, uh, star of um, Twenty Eight Days, days, days Later. Sorry, had to put that in. Yeah, uh, he played, Scarecrow played in the Scarecrow. Dark Knight. Yeah, he played yeah. Scarecrow. Yeah. And uh, Peaky Pe- Peaky Binders or whatever. Yeah. Isn't that the one he's yeah. on? Yeah, Binders. Yeah. Oh. And he was Blinders. with he's Rachel. In Inception as well. He was in Rachel McAdams with Red Eye. He was in yes. Rachel McAdams? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> <laughs> Poor wording. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that scene, so I'm going to have to rewatch that. I, that's new to me. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, uh, it tried to be the only thing I've got to left to say about... Yeah, yeah with this knife. The only thing. thing I've got left to say... <laughs> The only thing I've got left to say about this minute is that now I'm kind of, I'm a little bit heartbroken that this isn't a movie where Polly and he end up together. Yeah, they seem like a good fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's just so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem with that is they're both super awkward and you need somebody in the relationship not totally a goofball and, and she's Mary's insane in a whole other she's, way. She's, she's goofy and awkward but yeah but she yeah exactly she's totally she's awkward in her own way but she's definitely more level-headed you know not like comically awkward so yeah this this minute just makes me just makes me pine for polly's happiness yep (laughs) but that could be the sequel well and it's even worse (laughs) because briefly uh, he does erase this moment when he takes kit kat back but yeah then he erases that so i guess this happened Adam. <laughs> Hashtag Tolly. Some shit mm-hmm. in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and Molly. Yeah. Gotta ship them. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably all that we've got to say on four yeah. before we mm-hmm. move to the next yeah. thing. Helen, I know you've got to head off. Um, I mean, do you want to say briefly where we can find you on, on social media and whereabouts um, to keep a lookout for you? Yes. So my the name I use for for acting is Helen May Austin. May is spelled M A E, and I'm that name on all the social medias that I should be findable on. For example, Instagram. 
um yeah it's been great fun thank you thank you it's been thanks fun for coming to, on to watch the film backwards well, yeah <laughs> Luke, who are you gonna pick on now i don't know, I don't know. Who, everyone else has watched it <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll I'll call on my dog. Bring him on. Are <laughs> you comparing me to your dog? <laughs> no, okay. this, is, this is the place to it. <laughs> Do you need to go in the cupboard real quick? <laughs> yeah, just just give, give me give me a sec. Yeah. <laughs> I can do visual gags now. This is great. <laughs> we need to use this medium. <laughs> but thanks so much for joining us, Helen. And okay, cool. Thank you very much you. for having me. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Right, so shall we okay, generate so guy talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this what do we, we really to... think about him going back yeah. to D Flower? Deflower Polly to hook up with so, Charlotte. So, yeah. so, so, the big, so the big question uh, Polly, Mary, or Charlotte, who do we think Tim should have ended up with? Ended up with, I'd, say, I'd still say Mary. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, I'm going to stay with Polly. I think I, I'm going to stay with Polly. I, it depends. Just, yeah. I, we don't know enough there. about Polly. If if he didn't have the time traveling, it would have to be Polly. Oh yeah. Because I think it was obviously if he did, if he didn't have the if he ha- didn't have the time travel, I don't think he would have actually got with. Now, if there's no time Mary, travel, you know? did he run to Polly's house in the morning and just kiss her and say sorry for last night? <laughs> She so was like, it might just be the same awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Too... I, I can tell you this. Yeah, I experienced I experienced something very similar in my life where there was the awkward, didn't kiss but almost kissed moment <laughs> with a girl, and we Turned did end up later on acknowledging that and let it lead to a relationship. <laughs> um, and it ended awfully. It was terrible. I was about to clap then. <laughs> so when uh, <laughs> so when Tim goes back with Kit Kat, I know this ends up getting erased. But if it didn't get erased, would Tim have still kissed Polly? Well, no, because he's busy with Kit Kat in that moment. But he comes out of a different cupboard, so that could have been after, right? It could have been right after. He could have come back out for the awkward moment. See, here's the thing that uh, I was thinking when he did that. Uh, would Jimmy have ended up with Polly and screwed up her the, life? The association, the, <laughs> the idea is that Jimmy would have just ended up with anyone else, isn't it? Because that's what's sort of joked about. And yeah. and he seems like a predator type. Mm-hmm. So oh, he hundred percent is awkward, stuck in a corner, and Jimmy like was just like everybody witnessed him getting his. <laughs> I'd hope so too. But also, I don't, yeah. I don't think we see enough of Jimmy to to see why she likes him. I, I mean, I know it's a different story, a different film, but I, I, I don't feel like we can make fair judgment on Jimmy based on how little we see of him. Although how little we see of him, he's awful. Yeah, other, other than him yeah. flirting with the the bartender at the wedding. But we don't know. Most if they were of what together we actually see of him, he's not that bad. We he don't... obviously worries yeah. about Kit Kats. Yeah, because when yeah. he goes yeah. to the house and he's like, you know, mm-hmm. he's worried. That where she is she? Make it. Make it there. So I don't think it's like. Yeah, he seems he seems all right then. Worse. Clearly, yeah. he's, he's a friend of the family or yeah. something because he was at the he's, party. Yeah, he's not absolutely toxic of a person. He's just a bad influence on her. Yeah, yeah. Because she's very Im- impressionable. And she's fourteen, as we recently learned. So. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's also a predator. That's clear, anyway. <laughs> And so did I since realize that all of you, like those of you stay on the call when you're watching the video then? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <we're>, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing out on stuff here. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's mostly just because I'm watching the minute on my phone rather than the call on my laptop. Just because the amount of time it takes to load a link or a video on this laptop is awful. And I feared losing all internet connection. But yeah, like, are we ready to generate another minute? Sure. Yeah. If this ends up being sure. the perfect one, we could have had Helen discuss. Like, no, it's going to be the sex scene. Just get her back. <laughs> <laughs> we need you back. We'll have an emergency sex scene. Get back here. <laughs> it's a uh, so it's a nice. <laughs> it's a nice round phone number. And like, we need you for the sex scene. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number seventy. It's 
what every woman wants to hear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 70. Seven. Nah, don't do 70. What? You already 70? read it. Did I? Yeah. You read into yes. it when you oh, did, we did 69. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. That would be a little unfair. Um, cut that. Hang on. Let me let me just go into the cupboard. <laughs> you should play a little game. I'll, I'll, hey, I'll do this, you I'll do do. this gag as many times as I can on video. I'm going to go into the cupboard. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 do I, I what wanna, gag? I've I, I only seen to, that I once. To <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to play the same one over and Wait, over again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Did he just open his window? Oh no. I was like, don't jump out. to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it dark. <laughs> Just pretend it like it worked or something. The awful thing is I couldn't see or hear your reactions as to whether that was entertaining at all. Right. <laughs> I don't even know how it looked either. <laughs> dark. Yeah. Well, I'll keep that in. I can add the sound effect as well. We can. <laughs> we, we can be all right with this. <laughs> but also add the the awkward running forwards and backwards. Obviously. I'll, I'll then find out with the Skype recorder that it either freezes me or cuts me somewhere because that happened with the uh, with the live chat we did after well not live chat, with the chat we did after Unstable when that came out. For most of the Q&A that we had afterwards I'm just frozen like that. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> so, let's, let's generate once more. Five. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> right. One more time. Next one's if this is thirty-seven. What? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> 50. This one will be thirty-five. Fifty. Fifty. What's fifty? I can't even think. Um, oh, so it must be recording. around the. It's about where you are now, isn't it? I yeah, it must be. It must released. be around the. Oh, it is. It's sex. It's sex. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> is this was planned. You did this on purpose. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to text Helen and tell her to come back. <laughs> At least we know that Helen isn't the, uh, the, the reason for all of this. <laughs> oh, Helen's <laughs> Sorry, it's just too, um, <laughs> too ironic not to jump back in for a minute. Oh, did Reese did Re send you a message? <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for popping back on. I nearly sent you a message, so right. clearly, yeah, <laughs> Reese did. Sorry, it's too funny. Come up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just thought, you know, it'd been talked about so much. I thought I may, <laughs> may as well see the the scene you've been talking about. In all fairness, this scene was also Simon <laughs> Fisher Becker's first experience with about time. We invited we invited him on. Uh, he, he probably thought he was just coming on to talk about his acting in Doctor Who and Harry Potter, and he comes in. And it's like, and here's a sex scene. Which you don't see how many times he relives that moment. That was most of the five minutes we had that week. It was not good. Yeah, that's um, that's an. It's awkward watching that scene. I think maybe if you have more context, you know he's an awkward guy anyway. But um, yeah, I was watching that definitely being like, oh, okay, you're gonna say that. That that's a strange thing to say. Yeah, it's. It's an odd one. It's a. Uh... I mean, I've got I've got the script here. If we're if we're ready for that, yes. um, obviously, yes. Helen, you've given your opinion. Feel free to stay or <laughs> leave it. I may give it a minute, then you know. Yeah. Um. So we go about from. Do we go about from cut to him re-entering the room? Now taking off yes. his top as he approaches yes. the bed and removes her pajama top. Cut to them lying in bed together. They are splayed out and completely satisfied. Wow, best night of my adult life. Cut on, and off comes a pyjama top again. Cut to them in bed again. They are utterly exhausted. 
Wow, best night of my entire life. And now I've got suspicion I'm going to have the best sleep of my entire life. Mary says, oh really? So once is enough for my perfect guy? <laughs> Tim says, I'm not sure that's completely fair. This, is, this isn't in the film, I don't think. Mary says, that no, is... this next line, I mean. Oh. <laughs> Mary says, just one more little kiss. It's four in the morning. Perfect timing. And, uh, and then we go to exterior Goldborn Road morning. Tim and Mary rush out into the busy morning street. Exterior slash interior underground station slash various dot night slash day. Um, they're heading down the stairs. Then escalator of made a veil station. The folksy romanticism of how long will I love you plays. They pass the buzz, the buskers playing it. And I think that's all of the montage that we get really in that minute. But it's, uh, yeah. it's a lovely montage and a nice that we get a little hint of that montage. So maybe we can give some attention to that and not just the sex scene. Anyone want to talk? So everybody's <laughs> speechless. <laughs> no. All right, well, I have a question about semantics then. And, of course, it has to do with time <laughs> yeah. travel, right? Yes, this might be the same question we had. Okay, so if he goes back in time, is he starting fresh each time? Or is he done this physically? Physically. So, so, so when... Because later he goes into his childhood self, so clearly it's okay. physical so, changes. So... Each time, it should be a fresh start for him. So it's not uh-huh. like his stamina should basically be at the same level every single time, correct? <laughs> Physically, yeah. yeah. Okay. So so when she's so the way it's filmed, you would think that he's like wiped out, and she only thinks it's the one time, but he's really done it three. But yeah, but basically, so so it really wouldn't be that big of a deal for him to be so exhausted at on the third time when she's kind of in, implying what once is only enough or isn't enough well unless time travel also takes energy oh uh, yeah 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 true but he, now he's too exhausted to even travel yeah Ugh. i'll do it tomorrow <laughs> he could just time travel to this night like whenever he's born oh right <laughs> if, she's on, if she's on a business trip or something <laughs> yeah but then it but then wrong, one wrong move and they could just like not be together when he comes back <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hope it's not. It I'd hope it's not that fragile, but you never know their relationship. I hope it's not that fragile, yeah. but you'd hope. Um, but yeah, that that would be weird. He just, he just sort of thinks, ah, you know, you know, but he, he's he's just stuck on his own, waiting for a train, and he's like, I'll just mm-hmm. pop by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're married for like ten years, and he goes back and ruins it all because he did something wrong that one night, <laughs> <laughs> right at the beginning. <laughs> Whenever she's not in the mood, he goes back here. Yeah. <laughs> she finds out. Oh. <laughs> no, but so here's the thing about this scene, especially where she goes, so once isn't enough for my perfect guy. Mm-hmm. Does it get into his head like, oh, I didn't have to go back every time. I could have yeah. just kept <laughs> doing it every, like, all night. <laughs> Do you think with this episode, when we put it up on, on the YouTube, we just put, like, a, a little visual warning saying, like, no bad language, but content is discussed. <laughs> yeah. 14 plus or, or 16 plus or 18 plus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's mostly a case of if you've seen the film then you're fine. Yeah. You should you're be fine. fine, yeah. So, I, yeah. I mean, we, we could... We, me and, and Robert, how many could, people are going to... We could record a little something. Oh, and how many people are going to watch this having not seen the film? <laughs> yeah. We haven't been too utterly risque, I don't think. No. So. no. The only thing I'm thinking is, I mean, I didn't ask Robert what social media we put it up, this on, but if we end up putting it on, like, both your, like, your YouTube or your Lemon Drops page and my Bottle O Productions page, I'd mm. imagine there's a few Bottle O Productions viewers that will watch it but haven't seen the film. Maybe, yeah. So, um, I, I noticed something in this minute Yeah. that bothers me. Because we know that the vintage shop is fake. Yeah. Um, down on the but street. It's so based on a different scene. vintage shop. Yeah. The, their continuity for the set is putting a bike in the stairs. But that's a different bike in the stairs. Is it? I, I went and clicked on when her parents show up, and the bike in the stairs is right by the door, and it's blue. This bike looks red, and it's not up by the stairs. The stairs turn up past the bike. Maybe oh. one's Tim's bike and one's Mary's bike. Maybe like, I mean, but they—I mean, they said the bike was months. their specific thing to get continuity between locations. Yeah, that was what Liz and JP said, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if only we had Liz on today. <laughs> She she may join us for the commentary. 
Nice. And then we can ask all our questions. Once again, Graham Curry was busy. It was very sad. <laughs> um, Tragic. He always is. <laughs> yeah. He's a busy guy. Yeah. I just want to keep stretching out these Graham Curry comments because I know that Curtis, Reese, and Johan have no idea who he is. <laughs> it's funny. Well, no, he's been mentioned on the show already. Yes, <laughs> technically. Yes. Robert, I don't know if you heard this, Brian. Robert went back added and a edited a line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was That's good. Awesome. Um do, I mean do do we do we te- do we tell Johan Reese and Curtis no. or do you actually think we leave it? They have to discover it. What's that, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> who who the, the, the the mystery life of one Graham Curry. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll find out the episode number and is the it, date. Is it the one with the set designer? No, it's, it's not. No, or it's, has it, it not been released yet? It's, it's, it's not been released, released and it's not won't been, okay, be released right. for quite a while. <laughs> the episode where I yeah. added a reference to his name has been released, but no one would know who he is. Yeah, it, yeah. it was. I really like the fact that you did that. That in editing, you added a reference to a future episode. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> What episode so, was it? Um, I think it's September. You said it was one of late. late... Yeah, well, that, the episode that... it comes out. Yeah, is the twenty first of September, twenty twenty. It's episode sixty one, entitled "Dedicated to Graham Curry." Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think 61. Robert's Robert's reference was in one of Curtis's episodes. I think um, it was around. It's not loaded now, but I. But I think it was the episode, no, what was it called? No description for the episode, just titles. Oh, right. I think it was yeah, 1st right, of right. Yeah, I think it, it was, was 1st that of July. One. Yeah. You know, it took ages for IMDb to accept that plot description. <laughs> uh, too long. <laughs> well, I, I think it's more that they, they do have people read through it. And I'd imagine if they didn't, no, I had to submit it two or three times for it to actually happen. Because I'd imagine they mm. looked at that and thought, that doesn't explain the plot. And then eventually someone yeah. read the title and thought, ah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So that was Curtis's episode, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Curtis, we did have some good quotes on that episode. <laughs> yeah. Um this would you yeah, like thirty of them. <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like th- thank you, Robert, for taking your time to write that description. <laughs> that was if for some reason the listeners didn't actually read the description of that episode, go back, read the description for the first July's episode. No description fin- for this episode, just titles. The um, finger guns. <laughs> yeah, that, I like that bit. Yeah. Would you? Would you? Yeah. Sh- should I? Should I try and read this out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah go we'll it. do it live. Or if Kate Moss is listening, I'm sorry. Or there's no Kate Mossy things happening in her life. Or Instagram has rules. Or okay, I've got another time traveler in my hands. Or the Rachel McAdams universe. Or it's like a bootstrap paradox kind of thing. Or I'd never go back in. To, uh, back, back to me if I was time travelling or why do these guys in the Lake family keep secrets from their wives or you could really save money on holidays or everyone thinks they're the only one who can time travel or I had to stop someone from killing Hitler again or the Pentagon just released footage of HBO <laughs> or that's one version of time travel or I don't think we got past the first line have we or she's more impressed with the concept of more than one starter or I want to fluff your pillows or it's not allowed on my Christian Minecraft server or I see now hearing it or you take the kid with you or 10 minutes is long enough for any tangent. Or it only took 44 <laughs> episodes, but we finally got it. Or my real name is Graham Curry. Or that's Rachel McAdams doing Curtis right now. Or we've nailed this, I get this podcasting business. Or is that a bleepable thing or no? Or is this really the best we can do? Yes, it is, and it took a lot of work to get this time. <laughs> or is, that is the finger guns. Uh, sorry, that's the best finger guns I've seen in the film. Or it's like Rachel McAdams never put on a cardigan before. <laughs> or a secret plot to get Rachel McAdams to talk to Luke. Or this is one of the dirtiest restaurants in the world. Or when do you Americans learn? Or there's a lot of awards I didn't win. Or I'd like to come across cool, event, cool and interesting with Curtis Blaze looking at minutes 30, 43 and 44 of About Time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the clip we put on our Twitter. <laughs> <sighs> It make no sense. Yeah. It's a re- it, the, the, the clip is just referencing a previous episode. Yeah. <laughs> but... yeah what was it? The the Hitler one. You was it like time traveler cops or something? Yeah, there was a, yeah. There was a get, website time, time traveler, <laughs> and they they always had to go stop yeah. the first timers from killing Hitler. I'm more happy with yeah. the concept that some of you actually <laughs> listen to the show. This is this is what excites me. Hold on a sec. <laughs> 
Um, so when when Johan's back, we can hopefully keep generating. I mean, I think we can keep generating until there's like one guest left. Because this is <laughs> this is fun. Yeah, dwindle us down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I am at my turning into a pumpkin uh, yeah. time here three yeah. three p.m. my time. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to. I got people coming to the house here in the next little bit, so I'm gonna have to okay. excuse myself and get ready. That's fine. So I guess it's time when Johan's back to just do our little social media plugs, mm -hmm. and then we call it off. Hey guys, I'm I'm gonna have to hop out now. Okay, where can our listeners right. find you on social media, Johan? Uh, you guys can find me on the Independence Day Minute, which we finished about Independence Day. And previous podcast was the Roughneck Minute, which was Starship Troopers. And I've been on this one. I think the minutes right after this, this current two minutes that we're doing on this. Yes, you're, which, you're, you are. Which came out two weeks ago? Or At the recording time, yeah. Two, uh, yeah. Yes. It's two Ages weeks ago. ago to the listeners. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I did a bunch of minutes on the room. Yep. Yeah, you've beaten me, and I'm really annoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Am I the record holder? Right uh, now? Currently, no. yes, although Luke's about to be a guest again. <laughs> how, how, how close am I? Well, to, I think he's still one ahead. I think he might still be one ahead. I have yeah. five. Yeah, I have five. All right. Thanks All right. a lot, guys. Yeah. Bye. 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 Take care. Okay, so who's next for social media plugs? Because I guess. I'll get out here. I've, uh, let's see, you can find me, this is Curtis, you can find me, uh, just at my name, curtisblaze.link, curtisblazelink.tree, whatever link tree is, put my name on it, and that's where all of my stuff is. <laughs> um, okay. That's Better Off Dead Minute, all the other stuff, a thousand different guest spots, uh, my photography, the new site, everything. And it's been amazing being on. Today was so much fun. I, I had no idea what we were going to be in for. It was just, I, I, I thought, there's no way this can work. And it's been, I'm surprised it's, it's worked Thank and so I haven't much. lost internet. This is, this is, this is really impressive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then here's me awkwardly not knowing how to shut this off. <laughs> uh, the red phone looking thing. Yeah. You see, I got nothing like that on here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really hope that. Oh, like, I found for, it! I found it! Goodbye, guys. About, oh. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I really hope that on, on the video version, there'd just be like an extra 10 minutes of Curtis just going about his day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we all leave. It's just him in the background. Right. I'll give him five more minutes. Um, I mean, Robert, if you've, if you've got time after everyone's gone, we could do one more as a, as a pair. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm uh, Brian Lockhart with the Marine Corps Movie Minute Podcast, and we are currently breaking down movies of the Marine Corps one minute at a time, just like two minutes about time, but only doing one minute at a time. And we are um, you we're doing heartbreak. Than us. <laughs> or dumber. But, um, well, your episodes are half the length of ours, so clearly it's about equal. <laughs> well, we're, um, we're doing Heartbreak Ridge, and it's the Clint Eastwood movie where he trains a bunch of knucklehead Marines and. Um, uh, we can be found at the Marine Corps Movie Minute uh, just on Facebook. We have a Podbean site. Just put us in there and you'll find us. And uh, I look forward to my uh, episodes coming up on About Time about uh, Graham Curry. <laughs> Hopefully the listeners enjoyed them. The legendary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. It'll, yeah, it's time travel. It's, it's in the past <laughs> <Yep>. already. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah, to the listeners, because they won't know, we're recording this on the 29th of July, 2020. So this is months ahead. I haven't, I, I can work out the exact fixed date. So, Reese, I mean, depending on your time, you're welcome to join us for, for one last one, or you can say your social medias and either sure. or. Oh, I guess I can join you if you want. Okay, okay. bro. <laughs> Wait, what time is it? It's nine. just gone nine. I'll stay. I might drop out like yeah, halfway yeah, through fine. if that's all right. Yeah. Let's let's find out if a if a screen share will come up in the actual final Skype recording. It should, right? Uh, possibly. You're all seeing this, and hopefully, in the video version, they'll also see this. Wherein now I'm going to press. You're wow. seeing this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go. Hundred and fourteen. Oh. Isn't that like the credits? No, that's no. Walking I, on the I, beach. I I cut the credits out. Ah. Oh, okay.
You're able to send over one fourteen, Robert, and yep, we can yep. take a take a little look at that. Wait, or, is that the wait? That's the is that the one when they goes back with his dad? Yeah, he's a look at. Yeah. All right. Here's one thing that I always thought: could they not just like live forever? Sort of. Like, could they not just like go back in time? I thought about to this. when they were a kid, and then just live their life again, but differently. Like if Tim got, if Tim got like. I don't know if he was so say Tim got shot right and he you know as he was slowly bleeding out he like you know held, held on made his way into a cupboard went back in time to like when he was 10 and then just relives all of his life up to that moment again and then just doesn't get shot like assuming it's not an instant death I guess you could mm-hmm. with anything just relive over and over and over again yeah maybe his dad does maybe that's how he gets so much reading down yes. So he just keeps going back to that 50th birthday when he retired. This should have is been this... how we did bonus minutes. This would have been more fun. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah, we never knew what they were anyway. It might as well have been. I have a question if you still got the script handy. Handy. Yes. I need to know if the script says Kit Kat's a mom. I wasn't crying. Sawn's cutting onions. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior beach day. Cut to the beach. Father and son walking along together. Towards the beach, music plays. They go round a corner for a moment. And when they reappear a little further away, we see that Tim is ten again. A little boy holding tight to his father's hand. We watch them walk away as young Tim skips and twirls in the joyful wind around the father he has always loved. Ah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Exterior family home, winter's evening. Cut to outside the family home again, but now it's winter. So now I'm almost up to date with my story. Sometimes, just for fun, I still bounce around. Interior family home, living room, winter evening. Cut inside where Christmas is being celebrated around the tree. Uncle Desmond in a radiant waistcoat, Jay holding a new iPad. Kids everywhere. Tim says, Mum, surprisingly modern and good taste gift for you. She says, thank you. Open yours, it's even better. He opens it, the most hideous hat of all time, the full knitted Santa. What do you think? He says, I think it's gorgeous and matches Mary's. And Mary says, of which I'm deeply proud. Cut to Mary wearing the hat, the only hat in the world that might be uglier. Her face shows she actually has doubts about it as a fashion item. Cut back to his mum, delighted. What do you think? You were very clever to drop that hint. Then cut back to Tim. He's now holding the iPad, not the hat. Wasn't I? It's brilliant. Have you got one of these, Jay? Jay is wearing the hideous hat. Kit Kat is wearing Mary's. No, I'd love one. But who really needs it when you've got this hat? Exterior, Tim and Mary's house day. The outside of the London house. But in the end, I think I've at last learnt the full message from my strange adventures in time. The truth is, now I don't go back. I don't travel back at all, not even for the day. Interior, Tim and Mary's bedroom, landing, early morning. Empty yes, corridor, a little bad. sleepy child wanders past. In the bedroom, both of them are in bed, a glowing grey morning outside. A phone alarm goes off. Mary snaps it off. And that is... Here we go. So that part isn't there at all. It's, it goes past it. He just says mm. kids everywhere. That's I, I the figured only... it was something added because cast-wise, Kit Kat does not have a baby. They're... Oh, so you think it's like a reused baby? Oh, I think it's their kid. <laughs> or they cast it weird because there's not another baby listed in the cast. Oh, so you so what you think like maybe... they decided like what, just... in editing? Oh, that's we'll make sure it's Kit Kat's child, you know, and so they put this these lines in. But her being a mother. Hmm. It's a nice touch, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, making her and mother, it's showing, like, they've all matured. Yeah. But we do have a shot in the end montage, don't we? Like, a few minutes later, when she's, like, push- she and Jay are pushing the a kid in their trolley. I'm double-checking. In a trolley. Like a yeah, shopping yeah. trolley. Push it down yeah. a hill. <laughs> so there's does, something there. Does, I wonder if his kids... Will be tra- time traveling. Well, the boy will be. They? What a kid! Yeah. I, I think the, the question we asked is to wh- is whether um, Kit Kat and Jay's okay. Yeah, if Kit they Kat have a son. Are pushing a kid in the car. Yeah. Yeah, 
But Trump. with Kit Kat and Jay, one of the one of the questions we have, which uh, would be interesting to get your opinion on, Reese. Go on. Is uh, if Kit Kat and Jay have a child, as they do. I don't know. If, do we know if it's a boy or a girl, or do we not really tell it's from those? Hard, it's from behind, and it's dressed in purple, so don't know. We just know it's Kit right. Kat's child. <laughs> um, it's a mini Kit Kat, but in purple. If it's a boy, can he travel in time? Does, yeah, like how does it pass? Does Does Kit Kat carry the genetics for time no. travel? But I think he says it's from time. the father's side. I, I don't think he says yeah, because it's it implied because the only other person he mentions was yeah. an uncle. Because he says every like. Uh, what's he says? Every male well, of the family carries the gene. Like, if it's every like male I don't and think it passes Kit-Kat. through the females as well to the next male, if it started long enough ago, there would be a lot of time travelers out there. Mm. That's true. So I think it has to be time the lines. son just to limit it. So it, it, yeah. it can't. Yeah, it can't be that the daughter unknowingly right. carries it because then it would lead to an interesting sort of relationship between Tim and the child which i think we said before would make a good sequel <laughs> it's just like tim telling the new child that what happens when one out. of those kids I mean, never be... finds out because like their parent dies when they're young it's like oh no i was just about oh, just about to say what if yes. they can time travel but because usually the mother doesn't know yeah, about they just it aren't told. so it's like they're not told and they never figure it and out then they do so it accidentally might be able to <laughs> oh, hold up! Here's a here's a it's it's sort of a slight I guess it's sort of Harry Potter thing. But what if yeah the parents die, the child ends up with like a really really abusive people who just put him in the cupboard, and at one point he just goes he's in the cupboard and he thinks I wish I hadn't mm-hmm. done that, bam, <laughs> and he suddenly realizes he can time travel. Sequel? Richard, mm. hire me. I'll, I'll write about or, time or two, even, two, even, even timeier. That's how that's how the father found out. Yeah. He says. Yeah, we didn't know about well, he says his father stuff. was. I forget how he describes in the wording, but he's. A frosty right, yeah. bugger. Who. Who mentioned it? I think someone mentioned it. If. I think it was you two. You said, like, wondering if the dad, Tim's dad, went back in time and changed yeah. Tim. Tim. So he had yeah, a different child, was... went back in time, and then came back, and Tim was there. Hence, that's why you he know knows I mean? that you can't. So, yeah, yep. yeah. At some point, so someone he did. must have done it, right? Because he knows. Yeah. So there's there's one part of being a mistake, and then there's been like a time oh. mistake. <laughs> like that's a proper mistake. <laughs> like oops, and it, it'd always be really weird you. if you came back and the baby was very similar but not quite the same, and it's just kind of creepy. Oh yeah, it t- it took a. So you don't really realize. Oh yeah, like like, like, a... like he has like he has a birthmark on his yeah. back or something, and, and they don't like realize time, until. Maybe. I wonder if they'd have had twins. You come back <laughs> and you got two kids, and you're like. <laughs> or well, one of the other no. things I thought is, what if he goes back in time and somehow leads to Mary having an affair, and he, and he just like. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think worse would be he comes back and there's not even a kid. Well, that's what I said on the show, is you can threaten that kid any time. I could just erase yeah. you. No, if you don't shut up, I'll turn this car around. <laughs> you don't shut up, I'm erasing you out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> that's another way of, I brought you into this world and I can I take can, you out yeah, of yeah, it. I can, I can take you out of it right now. Yeah. <laughs> and quite literally, yeah. Yeah, you never existed in this world. <laughs> the kid tackles him as he's trying to get You were a mistake. Closet. I prefer Timmy. <laughs> I prefer Timmy Jr. <laughs> Oh my goodness, imagine like them getting, well, like a character getting drunk and going back in time and just not being like in, oh. a, in a right state of mind as he goes back in. No. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta stay sober when you're time traveling. Yeah, Don't oh, he, he, yeah. he goes back in time to the wrong point or he, or he ends up in some sort of mid midpoint. He just doesn't, doesn't aim his time travel quite correctly and ends up in some sort of midpoint where he doesn't exist either. He's erased himself. Instead of a designated he driver, himself. he's got a designated keep me out of the cupboard. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, don't let imagine go imagine, imagine Tim places. turning to Jay and saying, if I get drunk, make sure I don't go into the cupboard. Bad <laughs> things yeah. happen when I'm in don't that let cupboard. Don't let dark. me go to the bathroom alone. Make sure the light's on. <laughs> 
He only drinks at bars that are really bright. <laughs> mm. Yeah, he's people are really confused to why Tim's a, like a, a heavy daytime drinker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't drink it, man. It's too dark. <laughs> I can't risk it. I love that explanation. It's like, why don't you drink it like too dark? <laughs> Last time I drank, I had twins. <laughs> <laughs> if, the thing is, this this week I wasn't going to use quotes for episode titles, but that would have been that would have been one. That's a good one, yeah. Is this the last episode? Is it, or is this going to uh, be one no, that the, co- you put... the commentary is what we're thinking is the last one? But this is the, this is the last Monday. This would be. The Should we do Monday. a bad review, Robert? You oh, don't no. know about this yet, Reese. <laughs> I do not know about this. As of towards the latter part of the show, every Monday we read a bad review for about time. Okay. Yep. It All was right. suggested by one of our guests, Callum, as he said that some of the bad reviews are really funny, and they really are. Um. I I I I decided and I've edited out every time we actually mention the reviewer's name because I don't want any listeners to just go and give hate to the reviewer. Um I should add them. <laughs> Do you Oh yeah, cuz you have my audio now. I cuz I never got round to sorting out my computer in the end and doing that reset, but you've got all of my locals. Oh, I could just add it myself. I oh yeah, cuz you could own. find the review easily enough. So, by the way, the name that Luke is avoiding. <laughs> And I'll tell them where they live. <laughs> Wait, so, so I was thinking this right. So you can find, if you have a picture somewhere, you can find that place on Google Maps. Not always, but I'm pretty good at it, yeah. Okay. How long does it take you usually? Oh, it took me, what, a few hours to find Luke's. Oh, okay. All right. Like, no, uh, was... As long as there's some other information. In his case, I knew... Yeah, I'm gonna probably try and not mention too much about yeah, where I live. Exactly. You just know as, soon, I as soon as I realised that Robert could do that, I started being really careful when editing stuff. <laughs> it was like, so this is this is definitely getting edited out. Robert explaining how he found out where I live, like it's a... and his address, yeah. by the way. No, actually, I don't remember the address. No. Okay, so have I read this one? So, yeah, so I read sorry. This one. What What's the last episode again? Is that the commentary? Yeah, the last episode yes. will be the commentary. So the plan is... I've read all these reviews. Right, the, the plan is that um, the last week of the show... So to the listeners, Friday Just Gone will have been the, the time when we looked at the last few, the last couple of two minutes of the film. Um, for the last bonus week of the show, we, we have... This episode is the Monday. Mm. On the Wednesday, it'll be me and Robert in October talking about the show and like just in hindsight about what we think about it now how it's changed anything i mean i don't think anything else will be different but you never know we could be podcast celebrities by october robert october okay so i don't think we've read this one before you can correct me robert if i'm wrong one star this film made me angry it had me fooled to begin with as it introduces the scene in a thoroughly charming fashion it started to get irritating when Rachel McAdams and her fringe showed up on screen. I don't think the fringe was enough to ruin the film, despite the incessant mentions it got on the script. But it was around the point yeah. when I started to notice that the story and the character's behaviour was idiotic. The direction was appalling, with all sorts of stupid montages that were irritating as hell. The more it went on, the more annoyed I got with the pathetic execution of its conceit. I could see it was trying to be humorous and charming, but even that was coming across as annoying. Cinematography was really poor. So many scenes were afflicted with a wishy-washy look and clearly inappropriate contrast ratio settings that made me wonder if anyone was bothering to check what they just filmed. I really don't think there's anything redeeming here by the time it ended. One of the worst British movies I've seen. Spoiler notes. I didn't realise there was so much... I thought the review was finished. The plot seemed potentially good to begin with, and it certainly had a comedic charm with the initial introduction to the family and the concept that the men can travel within their own lifetime. So basically, also, quickly, sorry. Then. Yeah, sorry. Don't be dissing Rachel McAdams' fringe, all right? <laughs> so you lost me there, right? I would have been like, okay, you got some fair points, but you lost me right at the start. Carry on. So basically, Quantum Leap then. They didn't try to clarify the technical details of this. Like if you time jump, what happens if you meet your duplicate within the time frame? That's not how this time travel works. Right. It's mostly clip that that comment was me as well. I think what the listeners, what the viewers will see, but the listeners won't, is when I'm talking about myself, I go closer to the microphone, and when I'm reading <laughs> the review, I go here. Um, uh, they didn't try to clarify the technical details of this, like a time jump. 
It's mostly clear that if you that you replace him, yet you have your original memories before you jumped. This is a concept movie to show you time travel wouldn't be the solution to your daily problems. You're you're not expected to question this too much. A bit like Groundhog Day. Mm. Good, yeah. Um, I was it's like they liked it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Groundhog Day was a good film. Yeah, and Robert, it's it's genuinely a privilege that you're allowing me to come on to Cock and Bull to talk about Groundhog Day, considering how major <laughs> that film is to you. I, I was actually going to point that out earlier that the first time he time travels it just reminded me of Groundhog Day because mm-hmm. you know the first time all this stuff is happening um, like the table, like them falling over the table, Yeah. you know at the party and then him going back and realising it's all going through and he's yeah. stopping it all, so I was like oh that's that reminded me of Groundhog Day. I time. think Richard Curtis said something about like deliberately not watching Groundhog Day when writing it or something there was like, because yeah. I think a few people asked him about that um it's about having an allegory to say carpe diem sort of thing, or at least it should be. It totally fails to have that impact because it's nothing unsurprising or earth-shattering. And because it didn't add anything innovative, there were two points where this idea almost got interesting. One where his original meeting with the girl was wiped as he tries to save his father's friend's play from being a disaster, and later when choosing between his sister and his baby. It was also idiotic when he meets Margot Robbie again and almost has a misstep only to rush up and propose. Then the proposal is redone. The fact their entire relationship is based on a lie is highly questionable too. But then that's the least of its problems. At least the tone of the film informs you that you're not supposed to see that as a problem. Ah, there's more. Okay, I thought that was done. Right. See, that's the, uh... kind of what I was going for earlier about the whole it's all based on a lie. With basically like yeah. everything being for his own do like what's the word? Selfishness, I guess. Like, like as you, as sorry, I cut in no, again. Um, but, you know, you were saying like he's a unreliable narrator in that. Yeah. So he's only letting us see what he wants to see, even though morally they are wrong. Like it, like all the times that he uses it, it's morally wrong. Do you know what I mean? Some of it, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Um, so everything that he goes back for is for him in some way. Like, even when he goes back f- to save Cat, although you can say it is for Cat, it's for... F- what's the word? Sorry, I'm going on a bit of a thing. It's It's like, it's partly for him. Because he's feels, I think he feels guilty for that happening. So he's trying to get rid of his guilt. Well, yeah, I think that he makes didn't sense. She was having problems. Yeah, and he feels guilty because he feels like he probably should have. But that reviewer is also describing the good parts of the movie, and like that's the plot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So they like it almost got interesting at the points where you know stuff happened. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, so there, 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 there's happened. more. We're about halfway through this review. Oh, I'm going to have to get going in a minute. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll, I'll speed this up. All right. Uh, the other thing that annoys me... Also, you are obviously free to plug your social media and vanish whenever we don't have you at gunpoint. Or at least the listeners aren't supposed to know that we do. Yes, they do. Um, yes, they do. <laughs> the, the, the other... Help me! <laughs> the other thing that annoys me is it makes up the rules as it goes. We're only getting to see the results without getting any sense that the character is acting rationally. He's jumping around, saving his sister. Suddenly he can time travel with another person. Then he's jumping back to his future and everything's the same except his baby? Why? Because the timing was slightly out and the specific sperm that created the baby had changed? Yes. So he jumps again to undo this. But how? How does he get back to having the exact same sperm? Okay, let's assume that it's, that, that is possible. This leads to the much bigger plot hole towards the end. As far, I mean, the, the the main thing that I think we say is, is that he just goes back in time so that he's to not he gone... To, to when he went yeah. back in time so he doesn't do it. Yeah. Um, so he jumps again to undo this, but how? How does it get back to having exact same sperm? Okay, let's assume this is possible. This leads to the much bigger plot hole towards the end. His father has died, but he keeps jumping back to see him. Then his wife says, let's have another baby. He knows that if he conceives the baby, then any further jumping back will change it. I.e inevitably i.e. effectively kill it and replace it with another so he conceives and it keeps jumping back wtf seems he doesn't care it's changing every time that he um what's conception of birth yeah um 
he does that because it's not born yet and he hasn't got to know it so it doesn't so he doesn't care I, I'm, I'm fine with that like it makes sense yeah. um either that or the writer doesn't expect audience to care about this consequence the fact is i got a distinct impression the writer didn't care about the audience and that annoyed me too but the issue with the i mean richard clearly cares about the audience if he's listening to this show like that we, we, that, that, that sort of proves <laughs> instantly um that point is wrong but um, the fact that, yeah, it didn't care about the audience, and that annoyed me too. But the issue with this conundrum he has to face of never seeing his father again or having a new baby makes no sense as he was able to correct it the first time he switched his baby. So if it's fixable, then there's no reason he can't keep going back to see his father. Ridiculous. I think we discussed this as well, because it is the obvious plot hole. Um, that's not a plot hole, but that's just... It's the point where he just learns yeah. to let go, isn't it? Yeah, he doesn't need to keep doing it. <laughs> And if it takes so much effort and screw and screwing it up to do so, then it's about the point where he goes, okay, now's when we say goodbye. Yeah. He said, it's such a horribly execute concept film that I think it's forever tarnished everyone involved. And here's a comment which has been said in almost every review we've read, I think, except Bill Nye. He's still cool. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I'm giving this the lowest mark, I'm sorry, the reason I'm not giving this the lowest mark is that the first 10 minutes were good. Had a few good music tracks, though most of the score was dire. Disagree. Um, and that the idea could have been worthwhile, but this is a low two. I should say, by the way, uh, low two, I guess they mean two out of ten, because they gave us one star, I think. Um, which isn't two. Yeah. Um, if they want to hear us talk about the music, ages ago, now, Robert, on your wife's podcast, <laughs> My Life is a Playlist, we talked about, about time and the music in that, so if they haven't heard that, they can check that out. Um, the one final sentence or two is IMDB was just looking at what else Richard Curtis has written and it's a good mixture of really good stuff and really bad stuff chalk this up as one of the really bad ones some people they have no taste <laughs> and the people commenting and cultured great. <laughs> so I'm going to get hunted down aren't I everyone in the comments of this person's reviews agree damn I might not plug my social media now. I'm scared I'm going to get attacked. <laughs> delete, delete the social medias of the episodes. <laughs> Disappointing. You might hear my dog barking now. I should probably get going. Yeah, so where can the listeners find you on social media? Let's. So, you can find me on the Facebook at Reese Ord, Instagram. Uh, what is my Instagram? It is Reese dot O underscore zero two, and my Twitter is at Ord underscore Reese. It's you may not remember, but I said this last time. It's a picture of me in a suit. With my stung, t- stung, my tongue sticking out, <laughs> and I'm still meaning to change it because it's <laughs> not a flattering photo. Well, it f- there are no flattering photos, but yeah, uh, it'll probably be. Hopefully, it'll be changed by then, by the time this episode comes out. So you just go by the names. And yeah. uh, <laughs> Robert, where can they find you? Robert E. G. Black on social media or lemmingdrops.com for links to all my stuff. Listen to find me on Twitter at llama underscore bottle zero, Instagram the Ginger Luke, Facebook Luke Allen Film, all podcasts, radio appearances, new paper articles, short films, everything I'm remotely involved in is at lukeallen.co.uk. This show is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Two Men's About Time. They can join our Facebook group, The Cupboard, to ask all things to do with About Time. We're also on IMDb at Two Minutes About Time. That's one of the first times I've nailed that, probably because I've listened to that so many I'll times. I'll see, you're getting faster. I did a really fast one in an episode probably not too long ago because I edited that pretty recently where I didn't even know what I was saying but it was very nice hello it's Luke from editing here I kind of realised that Katie never got to say her social media because her internet went and all of that so here I'm now going to just insert audio from one of her episodes where she says her social media you can find me on Instagram and Twitter both the same name Uh, it's just my name Katie Proctor but the Katie has two eyes (laughs) but um of course it's insane now yeah uh, yeah, with with goodbyes. sorry, with my one. Oh yeah. Uh, I I was meant to say a minute ago. I don't post often on them, 
It's mainly just like the work and stuff that I might be doing in the future. It's good because people take more Hopefully. notice when you do post, so it works. Yeah, because I made it like not long before lockdown, like to put my work on, and then I'm like, hey, can't do any. So yeah, just thought I'd point that out. Yeah, I feel like the weird thing about lockdown is because I hadn't made a film or finished a script that I was planning on finishing, I felt like I'd been unproductive, and then I remember we've done 73 episodes of yeah. this show. So Yeah, and so you've been And hard. that I've become in contact with my all-time biggest influence in filmmaking, so... Right. It's probably... It's been a good... Pretty good, good year-ish. <laughs> yeah. Good couple of months for you. Um, So... The next question is goodbyes, because I didn't Google an interesting way to say can goodbye. I, can I, can I, can yes. I? Yes. I thought this one might be a bit interesting, right? So why don't you say that, because it's going to be one of the last episodes, right? Yeah. Why don't you use the last line in the film, but by the the end? And I did have a look at it, and it's kind of fitting. Hold on. Yes, because we nearly did this, and then I replaced you in the previous episode, Robert. Because you it's see you, isn't it? It's see bye bye, soon. see you later. Bye bye, see you later. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that well, might be fitting since yeah, it's like the last. Because mm. you you you, know? you started to do that in the previous episode, and I then cut you off and give Tim's big speech about all traveling through time together, yeah. every day. Which I I I kind of the listeners will know. I doubled up on using our full theme tune in that episode. I use the full theme tune. Well, I start using the theme tune when I'm doing the narration. And then I use it again when you're giving your Groundhog Day project quote. But actually, mm. your Groundhog Day project quote, I didn't realize how long it was that the theme tune only comes in halfway through because it doesn't... <laughs> it, 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 you're, it's twice the length of our theme tune. But it works, and it's still quite quiet, the theme tune. So like it's, mm. it's not distracting from your really good Groundhog Day project quote. I think that was... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so Reese, you can repeat that line. You can finish right. off this Monday. Yay! <laughs> no pressure, but you are no gonna pressure. finish off the uh, the um, penultimate penultimate episode. Right, you ready? That's not how penultimate works? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Count me in. Three, two, one. Can I just cut the episode here? Sorry. So, so when when it's on like the visuals, you'll just see me about to say it, and it cuts. Yeah. Like exactly. my mouth opens. Mm. To... Right, and, really? then, and, then, and then we could have the theme tune, and then you saying it at the end. After yeah. The post credits. Right. Right. How about we say it together? All right. Remind me of the so line. We... <laughs> it's bye bye. See you later. So we'll go right. three, two, one, and then we say it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Skype okay. could make this Wait. awful, but let's try. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Bye, bye bye. See, bye, you, bye. Later. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>